hello viewers welcome to this video all right so in this video let's see how to create a vpc and a subnet in the previous video we talked about uh, vpc private public subnets network acl route tables internet gateway and nat gateway and we also looked at what the default uh, vpc subnets that you will get when you create your aws account and so on and now we will try and create a vpc and subnet and see how it actually works so i've logged into my aws management console and i'm going to go to the vpc and in here you see there is a default vpc and i'm using the london region which has three availability zones three subnets one subnet one public subnet per, per uh, availability zone so those are the uh, the default ones so one vpc three subnets one route table one internet gateway uh, one network acl one security group so those all have been created automatically when i created my account all right so let's go ahead and create our vpc so there are a couple of ways to do it so one is using this vpc wizard or you can create your vpc subnets everything manually so in this video we will use the wizard and in the future video um, i'll show you how to create everything by hand yourself manually all right so launch vpc wizard and we have four different types of uh things that we can do by using this wizard the first one is a vpc with a single public net single public subnet and uh, as you can see here so there's this vpc and with a single public subnet that's what we are going to excuse me so that's what we are going to uh, do in this video. So select that IPv4 CDR block 10.0.0.0 slash 16. That's okay. So you can see here 65,531 IP address available, but actually slash 16 is 65,536. So you won't be able to use five IP addresses because the first four IP address and the last IP address, so totally five IP address are actually reserved by AWS. So I think one is for the network, uh, one is for the broadcast address, one is for the router, and two are actually reserved for something else by Amazon. All right, so let's uh, give it a name, VPC, my first VPC and the network range for your public subnet so 10.0.0.0 slash 24 again it should have a 256 ip addresses but five addresses are not available won't be available so you will get 251 ip addresses availability zone which availability zone you want to create this subnet no preference or let me say eu west 2a so that's the availability zone one subnet name let's call it public uh let's call it web tier public um enable dns host names hardware tenancy default okay create vpc that's all it takes okay so that's created and if we look at the vpc dashboard so now we have two vpcs all right cool that's cool four subnets three default subnet and one subnet that's been created right now and we have two network ACLs, two security groups, and uh, we have three route tables and two internet gateways. Cool. Okay, your VPC. So that's the VPC that we created, and it has the uh, route table and the network ACL attached to it. And if I choose the route table, okay, let's look at the subnets first. So that's the subnet, that's a public subnet. How do I know if it's a public subnet? select that look at the route table and the IP, the internet uh, the traffic to the internet is going through the internet gateway so that's definitely a public subnet all right route table so it has created two route tables actually so that's the main route table you can see uh, under main it's yes so these two are the, uh, the my first vpc that uh, we just created uh, my first vpc has two routing tables so that one is the main route table and if you create a subnet and if you don't specify if you don't associate any route table with that so that's the main route table that gets associated to any subnet that you create otherwise you can attach you can associate a particular route table to your subnet like uh, this one okay if i select that route table and routes 
the traffic to the internet is going through the internet gateway which is a public subnet and if i look at the main route table uh, it's all the traffic within the vpc so we have two route tables internet gateway so that's the internet gateway for the new vpc we created and we don't have any NAT gateways because we don't have any private subnets. All right, cool. So now if you want to create additional subnets, you can go ahead and do that. Let's do that. Create a subnet. Name tag VPC uh, is my first VPC. Name, um, let's call it uh, another. Let's create a private subnet this time. Let's call it DB tier private subnet and the CDEP block availability zone let's deploy this in the EU West 2B availability zone CDEP block 10.0.0. sorry 1.0 slash 24 create okay so that's our private subnet that's created and how do we know it's a private subnet the route table is here network ACL Okay, if I look at uh, the DB tier, that's the private subnet that we created and look at network ACL because we haven't created any custom route table. It has attached associated the default route table for this VPC. So at this point, we haven't got any NAT gateway. So the private subnet here won't be able to talk to the Internet. So for that, we need to create a NAT gateway and edit this route table and all the uh, traffic will be going through that uh, NAT gateway. All right, so let's create a NAT gateway now. NAT gateways, create a NAT gateway, subnet. So uh, we need to choose a public subnet, right? And uh, But before that, we need to have an elastic IP created. Create a new EIP, okay? So there's option to create it here. Otherwise, you will need to create your elastic IP first and then come to do this one that's okay so NAT gateway as I told you the NAT gateway always needs to be in the public subnet all right so let's choose the public subnet that we created which is this one elastic IP create a new EIP yep new elastic IP created create a NAT gateway all right so your NAT gateway has been created close and Let's wait for the NAT gateway to uh, be created and we need to copy the NAT gateway ID. Right, go to subnets and select the private subnet. Click on the route table. We are going to edit this route table. So that's the edit route table association. Okay, no, we don't want to do that. Let's create a new route table. Create row table, name tag, private subnet NAT VPC. We are going to create that in the uh, VPC that we created. Okay, row table created. That's the row table and we need to edit the routes. Edit routes, we are going to add a route. So if it's 0.0.0, .0. 0, .0 slash 16 so we are creating this route table for our private network all right so target is going to be our NAT gateway all right so NAT gateway it auto populated that one save routes close and we need to associate this uh, route table with the private subnet all right so look at that subnets select the private subnet route table so that's the default row table. We are going to associate another row table, which is private subnet NAT. So that's the row table we just created and you can look at uh, the routes. So any traffic that's going to the uh, internet has to go through the NAT gateway, which is which has been deployed in our public subnet. All right. So it has to be 0.0.0 .0 slash 0. But I don't know why it's 16. Let's edit that later. Close. All right, cool. So our private subnet now has the route to the internet through the NAT gateway. That's looking good. Go to the route tables. Let's see why it's showing 16. So edit routes. 
So this one needs to be 0, .0, 0, .0 slash 0. All right, save. Routes, cool. Um, I think that's all we need to do. So we've created a VPC. We've created, a, we use the VPC wizard, VPC wizard to create a VPC and a public subnet. And then we created a private subnet manually. And then we created a route table, a private route table. And we added the uh, route for the internet through the NAT gateway. And then we associated this route table to our private subnet. So basically what we did was uh, we created a private subnet, we created a route table, and then uh, in the route table, we've specified all the traffic to the internet has to go through the NAT gateway. All right, cool. Uh, so that's it for this video. So we created this uh, NAT gateway and uh, things manually, but in the next video, we will see how to use the VPC wizard to do all these automatically for us. All right. Thank you so much for your time watching this video. If you've got any questions, leave me a comment and uh, I will see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.